Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling is in I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to look at the new things in Zim 10.6.0. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we can visit the, the new things in Zim 10 this way, or we can click the, the 10 link down below here. Here are the new things. Uh, we looked at the radial menu in the last time, which is this menu that it expands open, gives you values and stuff. Now, one thing we skipped over, uh, well, a couple things. We have also provided a way in building the menu here. We've provided a way to put words on curves. So there, there we are, our emotions. We have words that go along the curves. And that's called label on arc. We already had label on a path or label on path but label on path was for uh, blobs or squiggle paths, so complex paths. And you could edit those complex, complex paths and the text would go along with it. It wasn't the easiest to put that on an arc. I mean, you could, but uh, it, could, it could be easier. So we dropped back and made a, a fairly simple class called label on arc, which is indicated here, label on arc. So these use label on arcs to um, to put the text along along there. So you can have a look at that. The other thing is if we refresh here, watch how this animates in. So we refresh, it's got that, and then it goes da -da 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 -da. So one thing that we noticed with label on path is the label on path, we broke up the label into individual labels. So each letter became a label, and then we curved or placed those around on the path at the, at the angle of the path. Or, uh, what's it called? The, I can't remember. Not the tangent. What's the one that goes perpendicular to the path called again? Uh, anyway, 90 degrees to the path. Uh, the radial. Um, so we like that because we found that we could animate those in a series. So if we then said animate that label in a path or the letters of that, then we could tack on, not a series, a sequence, sorry. We've got two things when we animate, uh, well, we've got more than two, but there's a series and a sequence. A series does one animation after another, uh, and a sequence does one animation per item. So that's a little bit different. So the sequence is what we're talking about here, where we could animate each letter uh, after uh, in the same way after a certain amount of time. So that was handy to be able to animate text that way and we realized, oh, you know, hey, that's cool. We should just make something that, and we could always do that. Like it only takes a second to, to uh, loop through each letter and create a label from it. And, uh, but yet, you know, why, why, why do you guys have to do that? We did it for you with label letters. So label letters right here, another little class, not too many, you know, it's like, 50 lines of code or something like that by the, by the time it's finished. It just breaks up a label into individual labels and allows you to then uh, do two things. And this gives us two things. One, we can set kerning so you can pass in um, distances so that the if you don't like the fact that I don't know, this I is too close to the A or the L is too close to something or another, you could then find out what the distances are and adjust this distance to be a little bit more. So that's called kerning. And also letter spacing. So general letter spacing, we can sp spread this out so that it has a, a bigger um, label or letter spacing. And it also allows us to easily animate it because now it's a container worth of, of labels uh, we can then animate that with the Zim sequence. So let's see how we did that. Here's another example right here. So uh, if we look up here, we'll refresh. There we go. And there we go. So th that animation was done in that manner. Let's take a look at the source of this code. Down in Atom, we've got smooth and sharp. So we're in 10.6.0. We have no example of label on arc, but uh, it's pretty easy to do. As a matter of fact, if you want, we could throw one in here. Uh, var label on arc is equal to a new label on arc. And then I think we can just put in some text. Uh, hey, and we'll do all capitals. Hey there, folks. Like that. And 
we might need to specify the angle. I can't remember where that is. It's either here or it was the first one. We can try it over, um, is that 60? That's a 60 radius. So that will be a 60 radius, and we're putting those words along that. We can also specify the font size and various things like that, too. Might be the other way around. Maybe it's the radius first. Dot. Um, now, what are we, we, this one's already got something centered. So we will dot uh, pose that or locate it or whatever at 100, 100. Let's see if that shows up. Open in browser. Yeah, well, there it is. It looks like our text is too big and uh, the pose didn't uh, go in there very nicely. Let's center reg that. Center reg. Uh, we don't put the 100, 100. We better make that a bit bigger so that the text fits on there. Maybe even bigger. How about uh, 300, 200, 200 centered in there? And we should be able to see it around this thing. <laughs> that we do. Uh, the what does that say? arcs. I can't even read that. And if we got this mixed up, I think we did because that made it bigger. Well. Did make it bigger. All right, uh, I give up. You give up? <laughs> Let's look at the the docs. I give up. Zim docs label like that. Just be careful. That's going to bring us into a label. So we hit go again. Label on path. Label on arc. So the label first, followed by the size. That was right. Followed by the font. So. What is this? Oh, the size. Do you see what's happening here? The size is the font size of the label. We want the radius. So it's label, font size, font, color, radius. All right. <laughs> we don't want a font size of that big. Uh, to get to the radius, well, label, colon is that. We'll keep the default font size. We'll make it radius colon 200 and that should be quite the difference there when we place that. There we go. Hey there folks. What happened to the center red? Oh we had moved over uh, this thing. <laughs> That's what you get when you come into here. Uh, this menu down below has been moved. So we'll comment that out. It will look a bit more centery now. What was the radius that we set? Rot, 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 rot. Radius 200, 150. And refresh here. Hey there, folks. There we go. So that gives us a label on uh, an arc. And there's other things that you can do with that as well. Uh, what we were wanting to go into though was to see how we can animate that. And by the way, you can also animate a label on, on the arc in something similar as to what we're going to see in just a second. Now let's delete that. And we pop on down to where we were making those animations right here. Title work using label letters. So we've made a label that is the title Zim can be smooth, loose, and groovy. And here we've uh, we've animated two things on it. So if we'll, we'll comment out that one, which is a clone of it, and let's see what our animation is doing. So take a look at this top word. There's there's what we're doing. So we've got the label, and we're animating each of the letters uh, down a little, which looks kind of silly because usually it would be up a letter. So we can easily fix that though. So let's take a look. We we take in that title. We're taking in the title. We're passing it into a new labels and letters. We're center regging the um, the X and we're bottom aligning or center aligning the X of it and we're bottom aligning the Y of it. So this allows you to specify where you want the registration point to be for each letter. I can't remember what zero means. I think that's the letter spacing. Let's change that to 20 and see if this will mess up because we didn't change the letter spacing of the original title. So we're going to see something that's longer put on it probably. Yeah. So there's that was kind of ugly, wasn't it? But anyway, we, we are specifying no letter spacing. So that'll probably 
It, it seems that that's the default. I was actually surprised when we broke those up, uh, those labels up, and then just put them next to one another, that it matches exactly what the text looks like before you break it. I was like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> no spacing issues or anything like that. I guess that's what they did. They just, the um, dimensions of each letter just bump right up against one another. That made it quite easy to then say, okay, now you can change that spacing on certain ones, and there you go. Okay, anyway, they're broken up. We have located it at the same place as the title, and now we're animating it. We're animating a relative position of the Y. I don't know if we need to do that, but uh, now we're going to minus 20 that, and you'll see that that will bump up. Whoop. Okay, so that animated each one minus 20. See that again? Whoop. Like so. Or I'll put that back to 20 down. This is relative animation, by the way, when you put it in quotes. Well, let's see what it where it goes to if we say at a certain absolute dimension of 20. Didn't make a difference. So I kind of thought that that maybe wouldn't. I don't know why we did relative in there. We don't need to. But we were probably testing something and just making sure. Uh, we're waiting a little bit before we do that. We're saying how long we want each animation. This this takes a bit of tweaking. Take a look. We're, we're down to the, the milliseconds here, to our tw tens of milliseconds. So 320 milliseconds, and we're doing each one. We can slow it down by making this 60, for instance, and we'll see each one kind of go. Boop, boop. Well, that slows down. It seems to take a while to get through that. You know, I don't know if you notice the difference. We can make it go really fast. That's what we did for the underneath one. Oh, each the sequence goes so fast, but the animation is slow. So you end up with a, a bigger sort of line curve moving. Okay, so you would want to want to drop the time of that to 120, and you could try and catch up some of that. You know, you get a little bit of a wave going through. Anyway, it, it's up to you to play around with those those amounts. Back out of that, and what was it? I think it was probably that. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. And then what we've done is we've removed it anytime, it, just in this case. I mean, you, you don't even have to have your original title. You don't need to put that on the stage. Uh, we would remove it from, I guess, dot remove from, just so we can keep the loc. And we wouldn't see the original one there. And you could just animate that. Now, what we've done is because we have the original one there because it wasn't removed, <clears throat> which is a little uncommon. I just like the way that it looked. You know, usually you animate the text. You only have one text you're animating, but I kind of like the original text being there and then animating on top of it. So decided to keep it that way. But then you don't want to keep a bunch of copies of anything. Same with say, even just circles. You don't want to put 10 circles on top of one another at the same size because you get artifacting around the edges of it. I, I guess the dithering or something starts adding up and it looks crumbly on the edges. So it doesn't look quite as good if you put three label or three labels right on top of one another. You can see some flecks or specks around the edges of them. So once the animation was finished, we just called the function when it finished, where we removed those two and didn't leave them there. At that point, we're dealing with alphas. Everything's alpha down. Um, when you add alphas on top of one another, it looked more solid. So we had to bring the alpha up on that title. Not quite to full alpha, but uh, anyway, there, there we did. So the other one is a clone right here. So we cloned the label on arc. It's always nice to test to see if clones work. You know, we build these components. What happens if you cloned a radial interface? I actually don't think, don't think we did test that. But um, uh, here we've cloned that label on, oh, what was it? Uh, label letters. We've cloned the label letters and we've done the same animation to it except made it go up. So that gives us the effect of uh, two of these things going up and across. Now, one of the things, I think I put a comment in here, try a weight of 800. Let's try a weight of 800, see what that looks like. I was kind of surprised that this happened. Are you ready? Oh, that didn't really work as expected. No, it didn't. I, I think 
other things have been adjusted since then. Maybe the, side, the time of it. So we want to wait uh, less time. Let's try a wait of 500. Uh, yeah, there we go. You see what that's doing? It's kind of like it's a squiggle down and then a squiggle up on the other side. And that effect is actually not the easiest thing to, to do. Uh, we kind of did it on the one below. So basically what we're doing is we're starting our animation in the middle, going down, going up, and ending our animation in the middle. Um, Zim, Zim can do that with wiggle. Like you can apply that with wiggle. You can wiggle once, and then it will wiggle from the center. It will go up, and it will go down, and it will go up again. But normal animation, that is not a loop. You see how that's not a loop? Uh, we're, if we're starting here and we go down, the loop would be start, go down, and go up, and end. A rewind, yes, we could put it. Oh, that, sorry, that is a rewind. Uh, down and up is a rewind. And if we loop that, we'll just keep on going down and up. There's no actual way with Zim Animate to go down, up, up more, and back down to the middle. So we lucked into that. You basically have to do two animations. So we have to do an animation that goes down, and then do an animation that goes up, and apply a weight. And that's basically what's happened here. All right? So, uh, I mean, it can't. Obviously, that can be done in Animate, but you've got to do two animations to do it. So probably that wait time would relate to something like the time here. I guess 640 would be perfect. 640, we didn't notice. Uh, refresh, I think that would be... You do notice that. The, the issue there is the easing. So we're going down and we're slowing up as we go into up. If you put an ease of linear in here, then um, that would probably match perfectly. But because of that ease, it looks like it stops in the middle if we wait that long. So we've applied uh, less time and lucked into that with a 500. We better update that as well so that uh, try a wait of 500, oh, not 5,000, 500. And what was, uh, what was our weight initially though? Oh, the same. A weight of 100. Okay. So I'm just going to back out of that and upload. Let's make sure that uploaded. There we go. There's the upload to the server there. Um, just so people know that that's what, <laughs> that's what we intended to try the weight of 500. Uh, I think a weight of 800 would have been for a slower animation. We must have sped up the animation at some point. Okay, great. That's a look at how we can animate. Do you want to just see how we can quickly... Uh, there's another one down here. Label letters uh, with title 2, and title 2 was this label. By the way, you're welcome to just take the text and throw it right into there. The problem with doing that is you're stuck with a white color, and this time I wanted a dark color. Uh, the other route you could do is throw the text right in there and then put a style up above. So style, color darker would do it. If you don't, just watch it. If you say style, color darker, anything else that gets made after that will have any color would be darker. Um, but the, the, the way around that, by the way, would be say something like style equals uh, color colon darker like that. And then once you're finished making your labels, then you could say style equals uh, empty so that then removes the style or you could style specifically to a type of label letters label letters I'm not sure if that would work it might um, or just label would would certainly do it style of label would be color darker and you got a couple brackets going on here so there we are targeting one, two, three, one, two, three. There you are targeting a type of label, setting its color, remove that. Um, anyway, or make your own label with whatever you want on it, uh, font, that kind of thing, and then pass that label in. Okay. So here we have a second one, and we're animating it in a similar way with a sequence. And we've, we're animating two things this time. We're animating the alpha, so we're and the scale y to one. We're setting it to four, so it's really big to start. Let's slow that down a little bit. We'll animate it uh, over a period of 500, 
and the sequence will slow down as well to say 20 and now we're taking a look at the second animation coming in here all right once again where it was big and it animates into small uh, initially we had that I don't know if you remember it was on this radio class watch watch this one animated and it was just sort of like one letter at a time boop 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 almost like typing the letters in boop 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 so um, for that you want a very small animation time and a pretty short uh, se sequence time as well and it's tit 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 each letter uh, then for this one, we decided we would have it um, change a little bit. But anyway, th there's uh, doing it that way. So you could also animate in rotations and, and, and then have all the letters spin in. So any of those text type animations. Combination of animating from here to here with, with spins. Uh, if you want them to spin even crazier, you can set the registration point of each letter to be quite large. And uh, then they, you know, rotate in big circles and then come down. And if you animated the, the registration point from something big to something small, you get things like this. For instance, set comma reg x, uh, we'll do reg y colon uh, 50. And then I'm not sure we reg y we regged at the bottom of each letter so setting a reg y of zero won't be it'll end up being positioned slightly off but anyway something like this let's see what happens interesting oh there was no rotation so here we're really dropping the letters in with the registration <coughs> kind of thinking and we also register register or did the scale so if we just did reg and not scale, and we did rotation, comma, rotation, colon, 360, here's what we would get. Alpha we're bringing up, registration, reg y, okay. Let's uh, make it look good, or be different. Whoa, see that? Wow. Okay, and, and that's a pretty small uh, text that we've got going on here. That that kind of animation might look better if it were on a big logo on the page like that. So one thing maybe that you can look a bit forward to with bubblings is perhaps a, a series of text effects. We've been noticing that Green Sock's been doing that. Green Sock's got some great uh, text effects going on. Now, on the other hand, like as much as we want to keep up with what Greensock does. Zim is certainly more than more than animation. Greensock's got some uh, some great plugins and they've been doing it for 10 years and really ironing of that down. They've got now the Greensock Club, you know, and all this pay pay extra money to get these things and I think that's great. They it's well deserved. They're you know it's been wonderful. We used Greensock back in the flash days. Uh, and that's really nice to see that they they're they're still at it and hopefully making some money. So to some, some degree, I always don't want to create all the same effects again here um, because uh, you know I, I like I like supporting the developers and uh, you're probably listening to this as a developer. <laughs> you know you probably like being supported too. Uh, so when when you come to make your stuff, it'd be nice to get some money from it, right? You know, so that's that's good. So it's hard to say if we should just throw a whole bunch of you know the same type of effects uh, in to Zim for free. So we'll see. Uh, plus, it's nice for you guys to build some. You can easily build those same types of effects by coming in and just working a few numbers here on on this. All right. Uh, but in terms of support, now that we brought it up, it's like, hey, uh, welcome to What's Bubbling. That's been What's Bubbling. You're always welcome to come into Patreon. Pa uh, that's the way that Zim... Uh, keeps going. We do want to grow our community and to some degree it's great words of mouth. Uh, that That's the best way. But bring in your friends. Help, help your friends code uh, some creativity on the canvas. Bring in your friends. But we maybe need to spend some money. We just spent uh, a few thousand dollars trying to uh, 
market on CodePen or hopefully marketing on CodePen, getting some of the, if you're in from CodePen, hey, welcome. That's really cool. That's great. We've been at it for a while, so sometimes we forget, hey, there's going to be new people. So if you're new to bubbling, welcome. Um, but uh, to support that, to get more people in, you're welcome to join us on Patreon. We don't usually ask or talk uh, about it too much. We're, we're happy to, more than happy to give you guys in for free. So certainly, uh, especially if you're a student, if you're young, don't worry about it at all. You know, <laughs> if you can help us out, you're welcome to come into Patreon. But otherwise, uh, we are rewarded ultimately by you guys using Zoom. So I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night, depending. And we look, we'll have another bubbling coming up, uh, maybe even a few more. Uh, so look into those and we'll talk to you later. Ciao.